Welcome back to the Road to City Hall. Earlier this month, my next two guests co-sponsored a bill that passed the state Senate that would allow the city to use those old lever machines in this year's elections. It would also move potential Democratic and Republican primary runoffs back a week from September 24th to October 1st. And that's to avoid a conflict with the Jewish holiday of Sukkot and give the Board of Elections more time to count the votes. Joining us to talk about their efforts to bring back those old machines, an idea strongly supported by Mayor Bloomberg, we've got Democratic Brooklyn State Senator Simka Felder, who caucuses with the Republicans in the State Senate, and Republican Brooklyn State Senator Martin Golden. Good to see both of you. Thanks for coming in tonight. Harold, good to see you. Well, <clears throat> start, let's start with you guys. You know, you both were in the city council. You guys know how city elections work. You know about what happens with runoffs. You've been through a lot of this stuff. Why, why change the date? Well, you've got to take a look at the... Uh, um, moving the date is because of the Jewish holiday, so there's no, there's no focus. You've got to, I believe, is the right thing to do is to change that from two weeks to three weeks. And if anybody really believes that we're not going to have a runoff with seven Democrats and three Republicans running, uh, is really taking a coin and flipping it in the air and, and taking a tremendous gamble. You're guaranteed a, um, a runoff if, in fact, you get within 40% of the vote. So more than likely, someone's going to fall in that category. And then we're going to get, if that does happen, we have a guarantee of a paper recount if you fall within 5% of 1%, a half of 1%. And that's very possible as well. You could literally, in an eight-week time frame, have to count a million votes in that three-week period to move these machines for the eight-week periods that we can get this election processed and done. It took them 72 days to count 22,000 votes. Mm -hmm. Think about that. It took them 10 weeks. There is no way we could do this with the electronic well, machines. We, we, we knew this was coming. Did you assume that the Board of Elections would be able to handle this? No. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. No, um, but, but I mean, everybody, nobody, no, even no, the Board no, of Elections no, knew I, they couldn't no, handle it. I got you. I got you. Um, as, as Senator, let me ask you. Actually, first of all, um, there are big religion, religious holidays and smaller ones. Where does Sukkot fall in, in the, the general range of religious holidays? Oh, I don't know. For me, they're all big. So I don't measure holidays, whether Jewish or otherwise. But the issue of moving the, the uh, primary due to the religious holiday mm. is incidental to the fact that these optical scanners do not work. This is only highlighting the fact that the city chose, on the state, I should say, chose a system that does not work. Everything that the Hava Act of 2002 was supposed to do, which is to encourage people to vote, has turned around. These optical scanners, if you look at any voting uh, place, you'll find that people can't see the, the ballots. They can't, they can't see them. And I'm not, you know, I'm not that bad yet. Mm -hmm. I can't see uh, the ballots. You have no privacy. You're disenfranchising voters, and clearly um, there is still a problem of the overvotes, which it was supposed to eliminate, because on the ball paper ballots, you can vote for three candidates for the same office, and none of it will count. Right. On the old lever machines, you were able to see what you were doing, you had privacy, and you certainly couldn't vote for more than it one candidate. It would candidate. not allow you to, yeah. to do it, so you so, would know something was wrong. So, right. so this year, the primary is is incidental to the fact that the machines stink. But, 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 I'm no, sorry, but, not the machines, the optical scanners. The optical scanners. But, but, I mean, but what do you say to, to, to those who point out, and there will probably be litigation around this, uh, that the disabled can't use the old leopard machines? Well, well, there's no question that we agree that we have to accommodate in every way to make sure that the, those people that are disabled have an opportunity to vote. What we would do, which is a quick fix, is to use the old lever machines and for those that cannot use those machines we would have the new optical scanner machines. You have ramps for the disabled that doesn't mean that everyone has to use the ramp. It means that there has to be an availability for those that can't use the steps to get in. So we would have machines for, you know, the optical scanner machines for them. Let, let me read you something from um, the New York Times, which had an editorial about this uh, topic today, saying, in part, part of the problem is the thoroughly incompetent elections board, which has been riddled with patronage for years. But the legislature is also a fought fault. It should have moved the primary to June to provide enough time to count the votes. At this late hour, Albany's only option is to give the board an extra week to do the counting. As for the old machines, they might get good money as scrap. Um, you, you guys knew when the religious holiday was going to fall. You knew that there might be a runoff. 
you knew when election day was going to be. All of that was known years ago, really. You could just calculate it on the, on, on the calendar. Why not move the, the, the primary back to June? I got a question, a question for you. Why do we spend millions and millions of dollars to bring in these uh, machines, these electronic machines, optical scanners, to be able to move the election up four months, three months, two months? Why? This is supposed to be 21st century material, which it is. What we got to do is allow the 21st century machines to operate as 21st century machines. We have a rule here in the city of New York that if you're in a half of 1%, there's an automatic paper recount. That's why we're doing 11 machines. There's no paper recount. No, understood, but I mean, and, but, but, but moving, I mean, moving the date, the point of the editorial is that would have worked at least as well as bringing the old machines back. Was, was, it, was it even a serious consideration? No. It's around, think about it. it, we're gonna, it there was no way that was going to be considered. The only real consideration is to allow these machines to work. They're 21st century uh, electronic machines, optical scanners, let them work as optical scanners, let them work as 21st century machines, allow the automatic count to go right to the Board of Elections by taking the UB stick and putting that into a computer, taking it out of the electronic machine so they're not jeopardized, and allowing that material to flow freely to the Board of Elections. And uh, by doing that, we get results in a matter of a few minutes, half hour, an hour, like we used to do with the lever machines. Let, let me move on to uh, some other end of session stuff. You guys are in the majority and um, there are a lot of topics that people are wondering when and if they're going to get uh, taken up. One of them, I guess, is, is, is campaign finance. I'm wondering why the conference doesn't want to support um, campaign finance. Well, I was in the city council and the chair of the government operations committee and had complimentary things to say about campaign finance. That was before I was educated on how corrupt the system is. I, I benefited from the campaign finance system when I ran. But at the end of the day, what we're doing is ta taking taxpayer money to encourage people to steal money from the city. The city spends about $50 million on certain elections for taxpayers. In the state, that would be at least $200 million. There are different numbers going on. But we see so many examples of people taking advantage of the campaign finance system. There are straw donors where somebody runs for office and goes and finds people where they'll say, you know, donate $50, we'll give it back to you, and you get six times the amount. I, I saw at least one version of, of this that would have um, paid for a state campaign finance system the way the federal system is done, which is optional by the taxpayer. You check a box and a dollar or something, some other amount will go to pay for it. So then taxpayers aren't on the hook. Does that change anything for you? Not at all. It's $350 million. There's not a lot of people checking off those boxes. Uh, so I would imagine that at the end of the day, the taxpayer would be uh, forced to fund that election. And that's, no, that's plain wrong. That taxpayer is going to take and fund negative mailing, negative robocalls, and they're going to get six to one of matching dollars that we see already got one of our colleagues that's uh, uh, been arrested because uh, of, that, uh, of that very use of those dollars. So I think it's very wrong that, uh, uh, that we try to do campaign finance in this depth. Uh, it's up to the people. Uh, we've seen it here in the city of New York. We don't believe it's the greatest system, and uh, we've seen a lot of uh, problems with the system. So I think the campaign finance is definitely not going to be the uh, taxpayer campaign um, uh, mm. funding. Uh, will not happen this, uh, this election. Okay, that's going to be the last word. Thank you for coming in tonight, gentlemen. We are going to take a short break now. I'll be back with the results of our snap poll and a preview of tomorrow night's program in just a minute. Stay with us.